Whose car, Frank? A Mr. Abbott's, Tech. He's a salesman for that big printing house downtown. What's the car in for? Why, the engine misses at low speed, Tech. I was thinking of replacing the spark plugs. Whoa, now, Frank. Don't jerk out the plugs without finding out the real cause of the miss. Paul can tell you what I mean. Well, okay. I heard you fellas mention my name. <laughs> what are you two cooking up? Strictly business, Paul. Frank's got this job with an engine miss at low speed. He thinks the plugs ought to be replaced. Mm, I wouldn't jump to any conclusions. Plugs could be the cause. But don't overlook the three main things that go to make up good engine performance. Good compression, good carburation, and good ignition. Yeah, 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 I know. You need good compression in all cylinders to get full power. If one cylinder's weak, no amount of tune-up will get the engine to run smoothly. Yeah, Frank, the rings and valves have to give a good seal in the cylinder, or some of the combustion force will blow by, cutting down power and economy. Uh-huh. And if the carburetor isn't adjusted right, or if the float level's too high or too low, that'll cause rough engine performance. Sure, Frank. Each of the carburetor systems, main metering, step-up, idle, and accelerator pump, as well as the choke, have got to work right so you'll get the proper fuel-air mixture at all engine speeds. All right, Paul. But this job is missing. Bet you I can clear it up by just replacing the spark plugs. Well, you may be right, Frank. But how long will it stay cleared up? You can ease a toothache by taking aspirin, but when the aspirin wears off, your tooth starts hurting again. So if you don't find the real cause of this engine miss, replacing the plugs will be like giving the engine an aspirin. That miss will come back as soon as the new plugs get dirty. Yes, I've learned that you've got to check compression carburation, and the whole ignition system thoroughly on a case like this. You can't overlook a thing. Right, Paul. And Frank, it's more important now with high compression engines than it used to be. These engines require more careful attention. How come? Oh, a lot of reasons, Frank. For one thing, gasoline has been improved to keep up with the higher compression. Oh, you mean that business about higher octane? Well, that's part of it. And certain products had to be added to gasoline to make it more stable at the higher compression temperatures. In other words, Frank, those additives were needed to make the fuel burn better and to keep it from igniting too soon. Oh, sure, sure. But, but what's that got to do with ignition? Well, just this, Frank. Some of the additives tend to leave a deposit on the spark plug insulator. This deposit acts as a conductor which lets the current bleed off, short-circuiting the gap. Do you mean the current will take the easiest path to ground instead of jumping the gap? Yeah, my boy. Maybe you didn't know it, but it takes at least 8,000 volts to jump a spark across the gap when the plugs are clean. Holy smoke. The battery only gives 6 volts. Sure, Frank. That means the coil has to step up that 6 volts better than 1,300 times. Actually, our coil can put out 22,000 volts. In other words, think of the coil as a water pump. A pump takes low water pressure at the main and boosts it up so there's enough pressure to reach the top of a 10-story building. With a higher building, you need more pressure. Higher engine compression also calls for higher voltage in the ignition system. I see. The coil's like a booster pump. Right. Now... If you had a poor connection between the battery and the coil primary terminal, six volts couldn't push the current into the coil. The primary wouldn't be doing its whole job. As a result, the coil secondary circuit wouldn't put out full voltage. So the spark plug may not produce a spark strong enough to jump the gap. But that isn't the plug's fault. Yeah, and the same thing could happen almost anywhere in the circuit. High resistance due to poor connections in the primary or loose high tension wires robs the spark plugs, and the plugs usually get blamed. You're right, fellas. I never thought of it that way. But where would you start checking? Well, look at it this way. Suppose you wanted to water your lawn, and there were cracks in the hose and leaky washers at the couplings. What happens? Why, you don't get enough water out of the nozzle to make a good spray. But you're getting full pressure from the faucet. 
Sure, but you got to fix those leaks in the hose so you won't lose pressure up at the nozzle. Ah, that's the answer. And that's usually the answer for a miss in the engine, too. High resistance in an electrical circuit causes voltage loss. So you've got to find those points of high resistance and fix them before you can get a good strong spark at the plug. That means you got to make voltage drop tests at all points between battery and distributor. Right, Paul. But before you get into that, why don't you tell Frank about some of the improvements in the ignition system? Good idea, Tech. Our ignition coil, Frank, now has closer primary and secondary windings, which let the coil put out a lot more poke than before. And that resistor-type spark plug is another improvement. Boy, I was wondering when you were going to get around to the plugs. As far as I'm concerned... I wonder what you're going to say, Frank. But those resistor plugs have a real story. Hey, Paul? Right. The resistor plugs have a lot longer life than regular plugs. And they do a far better ignition job. How come, Paul? Well, Frank, when the current goes through the resistor, that part of the spark that burns the electrodes is taken out. But the resistor leaves in a spark strong enough to fire the fuel mixture in the cylinder. I get it, Paul. You mean that resistor acts something like an oil filter by screening out the bad spark elements. You're right. But there's another advantage... Oh, yeah. That center electrode on a resistor plug is bigger. This means that electrode erosion isn't as concentrated because it's spread over a greater area. So the plug will work longer without adjustment. Another thing, Paul, you can set these plugs to 35 thousandths, which gives smoother engine idling. And here's something else about spark plugs that some fellows overlook. It's mighty important to use the right kind of plugs for the type of driving that's being done. Uh, speaking of driving, Paul, this owner does a lot of stop and start driving. I'll bet the engine doesn't warm up enough to keep the plugs clean. That could be a clue, Frank, if compression, carburation, and the rest of ignition is okay. Uh, by the way, Jake was working on a truck this morning, and the engine had AR-5 plugs. Now, I noticed this car has AR-8s. How come we use two kinds of plug? Oh, yeah. Well, that AR-5 is a colder plug. It's used in truck engines that operate in heavy-duty service. In that kind of operation, a truck engine runs hotter than the engine in normal passenger car service. You'll find that the AR-8 plug gives better performance for average passenger car use. Why don't you tell Frank exactly what you mean by colder or hotter plug? Okay. You see, Frank... The lower end of the insulator on the AR-8 plug is longer than the lower end of the insulator on the AR-5 plug. This means the AR-8 plug holds heat longer because it takes more time for the heat to transfer to the cylinder head. So people like this salesman who make short trips with a lot of stops and starts will get better performance by using AR-8 plugs. I'm beginning to see why the plugs might not be at fault. I suppose I should make a vacuum and a compression check now. Well, that's a good idea, Frank. But let's check out the ignition system first. We'll do vacuum and compression later if we have to. Meanwhile, let's turn this record over. Paul, you want to take a look at these plugs? Yeah, Frank. Just looking at the plugs will tell you how they've been behaving. For example, these insulators have a little rust-colored deposit on them, but that's normal. And you'll notice that these electrodes aren't burnt. So if the gaps are all right, these plugs have been working okay. So all I got to do is check to see that the gaps are 35 thousandths. Is that it? Well, you might as well clean them as long as you got them out. But there's no sense in replacing them. Aren't we going to test these plugs? Nope. You really don't have to do that, Frank. As long as the insulators are not damaged, the gaps are right and the plugs are of the proper heat range, you can be pretty sure they're okay. Tech's right, Frank. But some fellas have tried to test these resistor plugs using 100 pounds air pressure, and the plugs wouldn't fire. So the plugs were considered bad. Now, the plugs didn't fire because 100 pounds of air pressure forms pretty strong insulation between the electrodes. Too strong, in fact, for the spark to jump the gap. You see... It's a lot easier for a spark to jump through a fuel-air mixture than through air alone. 
So if you're going to put resistor plugs in a tester, use 50 pounds of air pressure to get the same resistance you'd get from fuel-air mixture under 100 pounds pressure. Even then, you won't get the same type of spark as you do from a regular plug. Why not? Well, that's because the resistor takes out that part of the current that makes a yellow spark. You get a deep blue spark from resistor plugs that's almost impossible to see because of the color and the fact that the side electrode hides the spark. That's why I wouldn't test the plugs in a tester. The real test is how they work in an engine. Well, Frank, these plugs can be crossed off the list as far as this engine miss is concerned. They're in pretty good shape. Then the trouble must be somewhere in the ignition circuit. Right, Frank. And that means checking the battery first. Okay, I'll get right on it, Tech. She's better than two and one-tenth volts across each cell. That adds up to six and three-tenths volts. So, the battery's in good shape. Okay. Now, with the ignition turned on and the breaker points closed, you can make a quick overall check of the primary circuit. Just test the voltage drop between the positive battery post and ground. If there's no voltage loss at that point, check between the negative battery post and the hot side of the coil. If there's no more than two-tenths of a volt drop, the primary circuit is okay. But if there is more than two-tenths drop, you'll have to make a step-by-step -step voltage drop check of all connections between the coil and the battery. Don't forget to check voltage drop between the coil and the distributor, too. You'll find exactly how to make these tests fully explained in the reference book. Okay, Tech. I'll make those drop tests and then let you and Paul know. And so I had to check the whole primary circuit because my quick check showed too big a voltage drop. What was causing that drop, Frank? A loose connection at the ignition switch. I cleaned and tightened it, and now the voltage drop is normal. So we're all right in the primary circuit. Fine, Frank. I suppose we ought to pull the cap off the distributor next and check the breaker points. That's right, Frank. Well, the points look pretty good, Paul. Now well, I'd better clean them and reset the gap. That's okay, my boy. Be sure you set those breaker points at 20 thousandths. All right, Tech. Ah, how's that distributor cap look, Paul? Well, I found no cracks or signs of tracking, so I wiped the cap clean inside and out. Speaking of distributors, fellas... There's been a lot of spark plugs replaced when the trouble's actually been in the distributor cap. You're so right, Tech. When I see a cap that has signs of tracking between the brass segments or outward from the center terminal, I play safe and replace the cap. I do this because tracking lays a carbon conductor from segment to segment over which the spark can run wild, resulting in a misfire. Well, next, I suppose we'd better clean up the terminals of the high-tension wires to remove corrosion. Sure thing, Frank. And besides that, we've got to be sure that each terminal, especially the coil terminal, is held firmly in its tower. If it isn't tight, it will cause a weak spark in all six cylinders. That's another condition some fellas are apt to blame the spark plugs for. So, check the terminals to see that they're not crimped on the insulation. If they are crimped, they'll fit too sloppy in the towers. Say, some of these terminals are loose in their towers. Well, that could be part of our trouble, hey? Yeah, Frank. When you find any terminals crimped on the insulation like these two, always spread them apart. Or play safe and replace the terminals with new ones. Okay, Paul. I suppose I'd better check the coil next. Yeah, just pull the coil wire from the distributor cap and hold it about a quarter of an inch above the cylinder head. If a good, fat, angry-looking spark jumps while the engine's being cranked with the ignition on, you'll know that the coil's okay. Well, she's okay. I got that good, fat spark. I think we ought to check the timing? You bet, Frank. Timing's got a lot to do with a smooth-running, economical engine. Tech's right. For good performance and economy, you've got to have the spark timed so that it fires according to specifications. That way... When the fuel burns and builds up pressure, the piston is hit as it's ready to start down. Suppose you start the engine and check the timing on this job. Okay. She's right on the beam, fellas. She fires according to specifications at idle and advances as engine speed increases. Good. That salesman's going to be mighty pleased. That engine's purring like a contented kitten now. Hey, don't forget that even though the engine sounds good, 
The real proof of the pudding is in a road test. Let's take her for a little ride. And so you see, Frank, there wasn't any real reason for replacing the original resistor plugs. You're right, Paul. Wanting to replace those plugs was jumping to conclusions on my part. It only goes to show you how important good diagnosis is. Right, Frank. And if our ignition system checked out okay, then we'd want to make the vacuum and compression tests. Yep. You might even want to take the distributor off and check it on the machine, Frank. That's right, Tech. Just remember this. You'll find it smart to tag all the bases on every service job. It pays off in satisfied customers. And that's what counts. <laughs>